So this video is going to be an introduction to Canvas, and we're also going to talk a little bit about why to use Canvas versus Google Classroom or Schoology, and a little bit about why I switched from one to the other. So this is Google Classroom. As you can see, everything shows up in a stream, kind of like a Facebook view. So you can assign assignments, you can post links, that kind of a thing, but it's all just in a stream view. So if you are in a project-based learning classroom like mine is, where they have a lot of different assignments that they're working on all at one time, sometimes this can get really confusing and it can be a little bit overwhelming as far as where to find specific things. It's not really a very organized format. So I decided to switch to Schoology from there. So you can see when you log into Schoology, it has recent activities. If you join different groups, that kind of a thing, that will all be on your main page. And then if you go to your courses, your courses you can set up in a little bit more of a folder format, just like you would if you had files on your computer. I liked this because then my students could go in and look for their specific information from each project, but it got a little bit overwhelming as far as the number of folders, the number of assignments in each folder, where am I supposed to go? They got a little bit lost sometimes as that. Um, one good thing about Schoology is you can do discussions, you can do quizzes, you can do assignments, you can do pages. There are a lot of different options you can do, but one thing I did not like about Schoology is it was a little bit overwhelming for organization. They got confused as to where different assignments were and it wasn't the easiest to find assignments. So now we're going to talk a little bit about Canvas and just provide a basic overview of Canvas and a little bit about why I like Canvas better than the other two. So one thing that's nice is that it is truly free. There are some freemium type features where it costs more to do certain things, but everything that I wanted to do was available in the free version, so I liked that a lot better. Okay, so now we're going to walk through different parts of Canvas and what is in each section. Later videos will go a little bit more in depth, but this is just a basic brief overview. So first thing you'll see when you log in is your dashboard. One thing that I liked that Canvas does in the free version that Schoology doesn't do is if you update an assignment in one of your classes for Schoology, you'd have to copy it to all of your other sections. So for example, I teach two sections of English 3. If I wanted to change that information in the free version of Schoology, I would have to go to each class and change it. But with Canvas, I can just change it in the one class and it'll easily update through all of them. So this is your dashboard. On your dashboard, you'll see all of your classes that you're teaching. You can also switch to the list view and then it'll show you any recent activity. Also on the dashboard on the right hand side is a to do list. And this shows up in the student view as well. And my students really liked this because then they can see easily what information do they need to do now? What is coming up? So the next thing we're gonna look at is courses. So if you go to the courses, we'll just walk through what one course looks like. You can set your course pages to set up differently. So when you go to the home page, your home page can be different things. Um, you'll see on choose home page. And I'll talk about that in later video as far as what different home pages you can choose. So I chose modules, so modules are kind of like units, and this is one thing that I like about Canvas versus Schoology is when you go through, they can easily break down all of their stuff. So instead of having to click on a folder for Unit 5, click on a folder for Project 2, and then find their assignment, they can easily see all of this. And just like Schoology, you can show them only what you want to show them. So if you want Unit 5 to end on a certain day, or if you don't want to show specific information, you don't have to. So you can easily put on there whatever information you want them to see that day. And it's a little bit more easy than having to click on multiple folders. They can just click straight through. I'll show you in a later video too. You can put all of their assignments just on one page, which I did when we got to the novel unit for the awakening. And I'll show you how to do that later. But with that, they can just go to that one page and they can find all the assignments they need for that. Okay, so that is the home page, and that's also what the module pages looks like too. I have my home page just to be the modules because I thought it was easier. So that's what the home and module page looks like. It's kind of like your unit page. You can break it up however you want, put all of your assignments, your discussions, your quizzes, that kind of a thing on there. Next page is your assignments. So students can access assignments from their modules if you put it in a module or from their assignment list. You can group assignments 
Um, so that way it's easier for you to find assignments too, which is one thing that I liked about Canvas is I could click on assignments and I grouped my assignments by unit so I can easily go through and find the different assignments for each unit. Next, how we're going to look at is discussions. You can have different discussion boards. You can have a podcast feed. You can have all kinds of different things as far as discussions are concerned. And when we get into the discussion one, we can put out that we'll talk more in depth about that as well. Um, one thing that I like is you can pin discussions so that way they show up a lot easier for you. Next part is grades. We don't use a system for grading that integrates with Canvas, so I haven't been putting the grades in, so when this comes up, you won't really see a whole lot, but it does go each individual thing. You can click on it straight from the grading and grade it there. We'll talk a little bit more about the grading feature of Canvas in a later video. Um, the grading feature of Canvas is a lot easier to use than Schoology's, and that's another reason that I switched to Canvas as well. So the next tab we're going to look at is People. In the People tab, you can see all of your students in your course. This is also where you can put them in different hours, so they can be in different sections. You can easily see who's in what class that you have. And you can also put them in groups. Um, when we get into a later video about assignment features, you can put students in groups for group assignments. You can have them self-assign. You can have them in specific groups. And this is another reason that I liked Canvas better than Schoology is with Schoology, there's no way to set up group assignments, and with Canvas, there is, and it's a very easy to use feature. Next tab is pages. Like I said, on modules, you can have pages that are interactive. So for the awakening, they can go through and they can click on all their assignments or any discussions. It provides an introduction, characters. They can click on their assignments directly from here, and it takes them to that assignment page. You can also embed videos or Quizlet flashcards, or a lot of different things from pages. On your syllabus, you can easily put any due dates that you have of anything will show up on here, and then you can also edit the syllabus description, so that way you can put more of your syllabus information. Um, I liked about the syllabus is that it put all the due dates on there, so that way when I was doing my syllabus, I did not have to put that on there. Next tab is quizzes. With quizzes, you can create a lot of different quizzes. They can be multiple choice, they can be open answer, you can set a time limit, you can shuffle answers, you can let them have multiple attempts, um, you can let them see their scores, you can require an access code. There's a lot of different options you have with quizzes and we'll talk about that also in a later video. But this is one thing that I liked about Canvas that was easy to use with any of the discussions or with the assignments or with the quizzes, you can set it to just assign to specific people. So especially with differentiation, it allows you to easily see who has what assignment and assign it just to specific people. Next tab is conferences. You can set up a conference with students. Um, you can set it to record, you can set it to time limit, you can advise course members so that you can have a discussion with the students in your courses. It's also really good if you're teaching an online course and you really need to talk to someone. This is an easy format to do it in. Next up we're going to look at is collaborations. With collaborations you can create a Google Doc specifically in here and then have set the name and the description and what groups to share it with. So if you wanted a specific Google Doc to show with them then you can go ahead and create it right here and then your students can participate in that. It's another thing that I liked about Canvas versus Schoology is with Schoology, there's no easy integration to Google Drive. Either you have to go to resources and follow a whole bunch of steps to use a Google Doc, or you have to do file, download as Microsoft Word, and turn it in, and it's a lot of different steps. Canvas easily integrates into Google Docs and Google Drive, and I'll show that in a later video as well. Next tab is the Outcomes tab. You can set different course expectations. Um, common Core standards are in here, as well as a lot of state standards are in here, and we'll show that in a later video as well. But you can tie all of your assignments, all of your quizzes specifically to different standards, and then it shows you mastery on those standards. So that's really good as far as seeing what standards are students really doing well at versus assignments. 
All right, teachers, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Um, at this time, I do need... Okay, next tablet we're going to look at is the files. So it organizes all of your files for you. And it was really easy to download an entire folder from my drive and upload it straight into Canvas. So, and you have a lot of storage in here as well. And so if you have any of your files that you need to put into any assignments, they'll automatically go into your files. Last one is settings. And we'll go a little bit more in depth into the settings on a later video. But on the settings tab, you can set your course selection. You can edit your course details. Um, and there's a lot of options as far as course details are concerned, making the syllabus public, making the course publicly visible, include this course in the public course index, how to sign up for course, the course, what you want the students view to look like. So what tabs do you want them to be able to see and what tabs do you not? There's a lot of different external apps that work with Canvas, and I'll do videos over some of these later, but you can connect your external apps to it. And then there's some feature options as well. So do you want their gradebook to be set up by Learning Mastery or Student Learning Mastery, better file browsing, multiple grading periods, how do you want your gradebook to be sorted? We'll go through all of that on a later video. Some of the things on the right hand side that I wanted to talk about though was student view. This was really nice on Canvas because then when I'm showing my students how to turn something in or what it looks like from theirs, I don't have to create a fake student, log into the fake student, remember all that login to show them. I can just click on student view and it'll show me what it looks like for the student and then I can walk students from that. And if you turn in fake assignments, it doesn't affect your course at all. And you can hit reset student and anything you submitted for the student will go away. You can leave student view, easily go back to your teacher view. So student view is really helpful in showing my students what it will actually look like when they go to turn in assignments, when they go to peer edit other people's assignments, that kind of a thing. The other things on this side um, that were nice was validate links in content. Sometimes web pages are no longer there. Sometimes you forget to link something right. And if you click on validate links, it'll double check all of your links for you. Last thing we're gonna look at in this video is calendar. This was really nice for me as a teacher and for my students to be able to look on a calendar and see what assignments are due on what day. So if they log into it, it'll show what classes they have and it'll show what's due on that day in a calendar format. And they can actually turn in the assignment directly from the calendar as well. So that's it for today's video. That's a little bit of a basic overview about Canvas, a little bit of information on why I think Canvas is better than Schoology and Google Classroom.